Hi, I'm Carolyn Evans Hammond and welcome to my tasting room. Carolyn's tasting room is where we taste exciting wines together so you can drink better and learn how. And this week we taste wines that honor the planet. So today's flight includes a 2020 Bonterra Organic Chardonnay from California, the 20, 2019 Bonterra Organic Cabernet Sauvignon from California, the 2021 Castellero del Diablo Reserva Chardonnay from Chile, and Concho Toro's Frontera Cabernet Sauvignon, also from Chile. Let's taste. So the first wine in our flight is a 2020 Bonterra Organic Chardonnay from California. Bonterra vineyards were farmed organically since 1987, making them one of the pioneering producers of organic wine in California. And Bonterra is a climate neutral certified winery and that commitment to the land and the planet feels good. So today we're tasting two of the most widely available wines from Bonterra the Chardonnay and the Cabernet Sauvignon. So the Chardonnay is we're going to take we're going to taste first. So pour yourself a glass and immediately notice the color. Notice how deep it is. It's sort of golden. And that's because, you know, that's that's an indication of some barrel treatment. And about 70% of this wine spent time in barrel. So we're we're noticing that and uh, and it's got lovely sort of pale gold inflections, which is very pretty. It's clear and bright, which suggests, suggests stability, which is great. We'll look for on the nose and palate. So let's have a nose. So swirl the glass to get the aromatics into the bowl and get your nose in there and let's have a sniff. You know what that reminds me of? Homemade apple crumble. You're getting the baked apple, a bit of brown sugar, some butter, maybe some, you know, butter pastry. Love that. Beautiful nose, very compelling. Have a sip and we're going to focus first on the tip of the palate to see whether it's dry or sweet. Because a nose, you know, it smells almost confected with all that brown sugar and apple, but it might be a dry wine. So focus on the tip of the palate or the tip of the tongue, which is where we detect sweetness. This is not a sweet wine. That is dry. Notice that? Dry. But you're still getting all of those nuances. So as it swept in, did you notice the apple? Yes. And caramel notes, lovely. And butter pastry, yes. All of those same notes and on the finish. Are you getting nutmeg? I am. So beautiful. It's a dry wine, but absolutely beautiful, you know, dessert-like flavor profile. Love that. So have another sip and we're going to focus on the mid palate and see how much fruit concentration we're getting there. A stuffing if you like. Lots of flavor. Beautiful. Streams in bright. The acidity lifts the fruit just like, you know, apple has that wonderful lacy acidity that keeps everything refreshing. You're getting that for sure. And we can isolate that acidity by focusing on the sides of our palate to see how much our mouth waters. Mm. Is your mouth watering? Mine is. That's, you know, that Chardonnay. Chardonnay's high acid grape and absolutely mouth watering. And what that means is it finishes with the palate scraped clean. So it finishes dry. That means it's food friendly, easy to drink, quenching. And on the finish, nutmeg and maybe a whisper of white pepper. Lovely wine, organic, great for the planet. And the second wine in our flight is a Californian Cabernet. So it's a Bonterra Cabernet Sauvignon. Give yourself a glass or Pour yourself a glassful and notice immediately the color. This is great depth of color. In the middle, it's opaque. You can't see your thumb through it. That suggests concentration of fruit, which we'll look for on the nose and palate. Great. This has also been, it's been seasoned with Petit Syrah and Malbec. That's going to add to the dark garnet color. But give it a swirl and a sniff. 
Do you notice cassis or black currant liqueur? That is the hallmark aroma of Cabernet Sauvignon. So you always look for that in a Cabernet Sauvignon. And here it's very articulate, very pure. Love that. Great cleanliness of fruit here. But there's more going on. Are you noticing a little bit of graphite? Sort of pencil, like old school black pencil lead? Yeah, I get that. And tobacco, maybe a touch of charcoal. Lots going on, but it's got a clean nose and a very articulate nose. Lovely. Have a sip. We're going to focus on the tip of the tongue to see if it's dry or sweet. Mmm. You notice that? It's not bone dry. On the tip, there's a whisper of sweetness. Now, I think technically this is about seven grams of residual sugar, just enough to polish all of the edges, just enough to lend a little bit of, you know, structure as well as mid palate density. So we're getting that this is 14.5% alcohol. So we're getting a wonderful balance with that whisper of residual sugar. Um, if you work it out, it's only about one gram or a quarter of a teaspoon per glass or a five ounce serving. So, you know, don't be put off by that. I think it just lends balance. So have another sip. Focus on what we're getting in terms of mouthfeel, because I think with all of that, we're going to get smoothness. Mm. Ripe, round, full of fruit. This is a cocktail style wine, yes, but maybe a barbecue wine too. Notice how it also fans out with flavors. So first you're getting the cassis and then it fans out with toasted tobacco, toasted nut, a hint of, um, you know, like grilled plum or something. And then on the finish, black peppercorn, like a good crank of black peppercorn. This is a wine I'd love to serve with grilled steak. Have another sip. So we're getting concentration, we're getting complexity, balance. We're going to look at the length and see how long it lingers on the finish. The final hallmark of quality. Still there? Still there? You're getting that? Still there? In fact, I'm getting black pepper and slate. Getting that? Sort of like slate as in that minerality. Lovely. And it's still there. We've got complexity. We've got concentration. We've got length and we've got a feel good organic wine. The third wine in our flight is white. It's a 2021 Castellero del Diablo Reserva Chardonnay from Chile. The next two wines, including this one, are by Concha Toro a B Corp winery and B Corp certification is a designation that shows a business meets high standards of social and environmental performance. It's a rigorous certification process that sets the bar high and Concio Toro is one of the world's largest B Corp wineries. So let's taste. Pour yourself a glass and immediately notice the color. It's not as dark as a Bonterra Chardonnay. Notice that? It's more straw colored. There's still gold inflections, but it's very clear, very bright, so suggests quality. Swirl the wine, get the aromatics up into the bowl, and sniff. Oh, this is absolutely Chardonnay, because it smells of citrus and apple. That's the aroma that you always get from Chardonnay. Love that. This was, this did get a little bit of barrel treatment, so there's a little bit of oak, but it's very understated. It's judicious. Love that. Mm. Very clean, very clear. Now, have a sip. Focus on the tip of the tongue to see whether it's dry or sweet. Dry, dry. Another sip, and let it flood in, and let's notice the mouthfeel. sweeps in beautifully smooth and definitely crisp. Notice how much your mouth waters. Focus on the sides of the palate, have a sip, and see how much your mouth waters then. I think you'll notice it's substantial. 
Mm, notice how crisp that wine is? Incredibly high acid. That liveliness makes it wonderful for quenching, you know, palate cleansers. So you can serve this with creamy dishes, you can pour, pour it with spicy food. And the reason for that acidity is actually because of the ocean influences and the mountain influences of where this fruit was grown. Have another sip. We'll focus on the back of the palate to see whether there's any heat from the alcohol showing through because this I think is uh, pretty full bodied. So imagine around 13.5, indeed 13.5% alcohol. So have a sip, focus on the back of the palate to see whether there's any heat from the alcohol, which would suggest it's out of balance. Not at all, absolutely no heat, just beautiful fruit. Lovely. And on the finish, are you noticing a hint of butterscotch? That butterscotch, it's dry, but it's that essence of butterscotch or toffee. Lovely confected note. That is from the oak. And it makes your palate, you know, beautifully seasoned. And with this wine, I would serve it with fettuccine alfredo. All of the flavors would go beautifully or a grilled Caesar salad. Fantastic. So there we have it, a beautiful white from Chile. So the fourth one in our flight is Frontera Cabernet Sauvignon, also by Concha Toro, but it's her entry level wine, non vintage dated. And what that means is no year is on the label. And that's because they aim for a signature taste profile year in, year out. And I think they achieved that with this wine. So pour yourself a glass and notice the color. Great depth of color. It's really deep, you know, which suggests concentration, which I think we'll find on the nose and palate. So give it a swirl and a sniff. Mm. Yes, deep aromas, sort of poached plum, smoked plum. Yes, black currant. Yes, it's Cabernet and also a hint of slate. It's only a whisper, sort of an underpinning. So some complexity, not a ton, but definitely fruit drenched. Have a sip and we're gonna focus on the tip of the palate and see whether it's dry or sweet. It's not bone dry. There's some residual sugar, but just enough to kind of polish everything up. Have another sip and focus just how it feels in the mouth and how the balance is. Because I think you'll notice that, that you know, residual sugar just polishes, polishes up the fruit a little bit, which we want. Mm. Isn't that lovely? Round, ripe, full of fruit, easy drinking. This is the epitome of a cocktail style wine. The wine you can just sip on its own, maybe with a handful of nuts. black forest fruit. Yes, plum, but also lots of blueberry, you know, a little bit of blackberry, lovely crush of fresh fruit. There's purity, there's cleanliness, great. And on the finish, that whisper of slate comes through again. So there's some things going on, a little bit of complexity, lots of concentration, great balance. And it's, you know, it's the kind of wine that you can pour at a party. It's easy and it's good for the planet. So there you have it. Four wines that honor the planet. Which wine did you find most intriguing? Let me know in the comments below here on YouTube. And don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm coming right back with other delicious wines here at Access Luxury so you can drink better, save money, and stay in the know.